Hey everybody, this is Sarah Long. I'm so glad that you decided to give clarinet a try. We are gonna go through some basics of getting started on your clarinet. That's my dog. And I'm gonna show you how to put your clarinet together. We're gonna to talk about reeds, and then maybe at the end we'll get into a little bit of how to form your embouchure, which is how you form your mouth, and start making some sounds. All right, so you've got your clarinet, you've opened your case, and you're going, that's a lot of pieces because the clarinet has a lot of pieces to it. I have two clarinets in my case, so just disregard everything down here. We're just gonna focus on your the one clarinet that you have. This is the bell, and this is going to be the first piece that you'll pull out. This is the bottom of the clarinet. This right here with three holes with silver rings is the lower joint and that goes in the bell. This is the upper joint, it has three holes but only two silver rings. That's the upper joint. Then you have what's called the barrel, because it looks like a barrel. And the mouthpiece. And we'll talk about all this extra stuff that goes on the mouthpiece in a little bit. So let's start putting our clarinet together. All right, so I've got my clarinet case here and I'm ready to start assembling my instrument. Like I said, the bell is the bottom then the next thing you want is your lower joint. Now, when you're assembling the clarinet, you don't want to hold it around the keys because you could very easily bend these keys. So try to find somewhere where you're not going to bend any metal and twist it on or rock it on very gently until you get it nice and lined up. And my insignia right here is pretty faded, but I want to get it so that the two logos line up with each other, okay? So there's your first two pieces. Then you want your upper joint. Again, these keys on the side, very easy to bend. So you can put your fingers over the holes or hold it just very cradled in your hand very gently. Okay, then you're going to these side keys line up. It's almost like a little puzzle piece over here on the side. Not sure if you can see that or not, but there's this and then there's this. These two pieces go together very carefully. One thing you have to be sure not to do is be pressing on these keys when you put the upper joint on because you could jam it and then bend those two pieces of metal. So. Clarinet's very tricky to put together. I'm gonna to do that one more time and maybe show you from this side. So you see, this is the piece that I'm talking about and if I press these down, it goes out. So I have to have those not pressed down. And then I just have to sort of wiggle until these two almost puzzle piece looking things are lined up together. So now I've got bell, lower joint, upper joint. Next is the barrel. This is a super easy one. No keys to bend. Just twist it on until you've got it. And again, you can try to line up that label on the front. Mine's, mine's super faded. But so you'll have a label here, one, two, three, and four, and try to have them all lined up in a row. Last but not least is your mouthpiece, and that's going to do it for the five pieces of the body of the clarinet, but we're not done. You have a ligature. Hopefully one came in your case. Um, it's probably made out of metal, and it's probably different than mine. It may have two screws to it, and it may even go this way to where it's facing you. Mine is what's called an inverted ligature. I don't want to confuse you by telling you anymore, um, but we'll talk about a little bit more about how what this ligature is for. 
But first we need to talk about reads. Um, the read is something that you have to get separately and a whole nother set of knowledge goes into knowing what to do with your reads. So I'm going to pause it and we're going to, I'm going to get set up so we can talk about reads. Okay. So you can't make a sound on your clarinet without reads. Um, like I said, it's something that you have to buy separately and they come in boxes of five or 10. Ideally you'll get a box of at least five and not buy them um, individually. So they'll come in a box. I already have these out of the box and you'll see they come in a little protector that either looks like this or like this depending on the brand of reed that you're going to buy. These are Rico reeds and these are Van Doren reeds. Also Mitchell Lurie makes reeds um, and I can send links along to so that you can find where to buy these things. Also Chick Piano in Athens carries these things as well. Um, so like I said you want a box of five or ten and then you want to just go ahead and start what we call breaking in five reads at a time so that you're never just playing on one every single day but in a day where you, in a week where you're going to school five days a week each day, ideally, you could play a different read and then sort of have them on a rotation so that they'll last longer. So once you get your read, you know, take it out of the protector, again, pretty carefully. Um, sixth graders, you'll want to start maybe on a size two, two and a half read. Um, and that just means that it's softer or and not as thick as the higher the number is. So two, two and a half is pretty beginner level. Um, I play on a four or a four and a half read sometimes. And so these are made of cane. Again, pretty breakable. You've got to be very careful. When you get your reeds out of the box, you want to go ahead and just lay them on a flat surface. Now to start breaking in your reeds, you want to use spit and or water. Um, I've got an old medicine bottle here that's got the label ripped off so that we don't see anybody's prescriptions or anything. Um, just stick it in your mouth. You know, wet it pretty good, maybe for a couple minutes um, on both ends. Because when you get your reed, it's just made of raw cane and it's not sealed. So it's not going to keep the moisture in and um, start to break in. You can also put them in some tap water and you can leave them, you can put off a couple in at a time and let them just soak no longer than five minutes each, maybe just two minutes to begin with because you're going to be starting with pretty soft reeds. So you want to get them pretty wet and just sort of rub some of the oils off of your hand onto them so that they start to seal up and be able to retain moisture and their shape. Pretty complicated stuff. So yeah, I'm just going to sort of start breaking these in. All five, same day, I'm going to do the same treatment to all five. And then first day I'm going to play just a few notes on each. Before we get to making sounds, I wanted to show you after I've got some reeds, I've got five reeds. These are all already broken in. Those are the ones that I just started on over there. So these are the ones that are already in rotation. I've got them in what's called a reed case, which has a glass insert and it's nice and smooth and velvety inside and it treats the reeds really well. This is made by Selmer. You can get it at your local music store or I can send you a link to get one. Lots of things to get and yes, you, you do really need to get these because you can't keep them in the protector from the box once you've taken it out of the box. So I've got my five reeds. I'm going to play them on a rotation and I'll just get one out of the case and we'll see what happens. All right, putting your reed on your clarinet is also really important how you do it. So you want the face of your mouthpiece facing you. That's the flat part. This is the front. This is the back. You want the face facing you and you want to line your reed up so that 
you can see just a hair of black over top of your reed. And then you want to take your ligature and slip it over. Now, like I said, your ligature is going to face you and maybe have two screws. Now, when you're starting to screw the ligature on, it's got to be really careful not to wiggle the reed out of place. So, I would recommend holding the ligature in place while you screw it. And you don't want to screw it down too hard because then it'll break your reed or put a dent in your reed. All right, let's talk about embouchure before we even get to anything like hand position. Embouchure is a fancy way of saying that's how you hold your mouth. Embouchure. And it involves your lips, the muscles around your lips, your tongue, the inside of your mouth, everything. So, most important thing, take two fingers and flatten out your lower lip against your lower teeth. And what you want to do is build up those muscles. Those muscles will build up over time. And you almost want your chin to start looking pretty flat like that. Yep. And then you place, you want your lower lip, the line between your lip and your face, your chin, to hit right about three quarters of the way up on the reed, like so. Okay, then you're going to take your upper teeth and they're actually going to rest on top of the mouthpiece. Now I have a guard on my mouthpiece. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's black, but it is an extra layer of protection for my mouthpiece, but it's also protection for my teeth. It's just a little bit of a rubber. It has a sticky on one side and it sticks to the mouthpiece. Again, something that you can get from your local music store or on order online. It's very cheap. So, lower lip, flat, against the reed, upper, upper teeth, rest on top of the mouthpiece. Those are the first two things, and then what you're going to do is just imagine that the rest of your lips you're, are going to form sort of a drawstring around the mouthpiece, forming a, a cushiony pillow for your mouthpiece. So. You don't want to make what's called a smile embouchure, which would mean that the corners of your mouth are back, but rather you want to draw your corners into like a ooh shape. So flat, key, and then without pressing any keys down, see if you can get a sound out. This is what's called an open G on clarinet. And the reason you hear the note starting and stopping is because I'm using my tongue to hit the reed below where my, in between where my teeth are. And that's called articulation. Using your tongue to stop the sound and then allow, releasing your tongue to allow the sound to start again. That's called articulation. Let's just try making a few sounds together. And you make it what's called a squeak, like this. <coughs> sounds like a duck. Not the sound you should be getting, but at least you're getting some kind of sound out, which means you've got a read on. So thumbs up for that. Just try forming your embouchure, taking a deep breath from your belly, and then just letting it go into the clarinet and see what happens. <coughs> Let's try a couple more times. see what my chin is looking like. Make sure we have a really good embouchure set up so we can make beautiful sounds on the clarinet. Good luck everyone whether you're a first time clarinet player or it's something that you're trying again for the second or third or fourth or fifth year. I'm here to help. If you have questions you can get in contact with me through Heart Music and I hope that you are going to enjoy playing the clarinet.